Hi everybody, today I'm going to share with you the 8 principles of Montessori. Now whether you're a parent or a principal of a school or a teacher who's looking at implementing Montessori, these 8 principles are absolutely essential for you to understand. Without understanding this principle, of course it's easy to buy materials and to use it with the children, teach them some pouring, transferring, etc. However, without these 8 principles, you know, half of the benefits or even more than half of the benefit of Montessori is lost. Now, what are these 8 principles? The first principle is movement and cognition. Now, what Maria Montessori says is that without movement, that can, there cannot be any learning. A child has to move to be able to learn. Even we as adults, when we have uh, a new phone, say, in our hands, we can't just learn how to use it without actually exploring with the material, without moving, with, without moving our hands. Even as I'm speaking now, I'm using movement. So movement is absolutely essential. Life itself starts with movement. And without movement, there is no cognition. So whatever you're setting up, wherever you're setting up your Montessori environment, make sure there is enough room for the children to move around and to explore. That is absolutely essential. Now, the second principle is choice. Now, it has been observed that learning and well-being are improved if people have a sense of control over their lives. So, if you give children choices, say for example, you give a few choices of materials on the shelf and children go and choose their own material, what happens here is that because they're able to choose what they want, they then have a sense of control over their learning. So this sense of control gives them, it improves, it helps them to improve their learning. If you allot a child a material and say, here, you have to do this you know, you can't do any of these other materials. You just have to focus on this. After you finish this, then I'll give you another material. You make the choices. The child, child then is not, he does not have the sense of control. And if he does not have that sense of control, he will not be likely to take ownership of what he's learning. The third principle is interest. Now, when people have an interest in something, they will learn better. We know that. We know that with ourselves. So similarly with children as well, when they're interested in something, then they're definitely going to learn better. The fourth principle is extrinsic rewards are avoided. Now, if you have to give children reward, say we give a sticker if they do a good job or you put a star where they, you know, it doesn't really work because then they are only being motivated by what they get from you. Rewards are really not necessary. Children are not looking for rewards to do something which they're interested in. Giving them rewards only will spoil their learning. What happens when you give rewards to children is that they get motivated because you're giving them a reward. Then one day when you withdraw that reward, the motivation then drops. So it is just not good. What we want children to do is to have self-motivation because self-motivation is a quality you want to build in the child that will carry on a long way in life. The fifth principle is learning from and with peers. So what does this mean? This means that you know, children work, learn better when they are in a collaborative environment. That is why in a Montessori environment, you have the age group three to six years you know, in a classroom. What happens here is that they tend to learn from each other. Younger children will observe the older children and they will try to imitate what they do and they will follow what they do. And the older children, older children here have the, the opportunity then to stand up as leaders to guide the little ones. The sixth principle is learning in context. So what this means is that if you have to bring our learning in the classroom or with your child at home, you have to make it, you know, meaningful. Say, for example, if you're learning about insects, you're going to, you know, you want the children to explore more about insects and stuff. So instead of just learning abstractly with pictures and stuff, uh, take them to a meaningful context. Maybe take a walk and uh, observe the insects in the park or uh, under the tree, you know, observe some bullions. And then you bring that learning back to the child. 
So what happens here then is that, you know, it becomes more meaningful. The child has observed the, um, the insects in the natural environment and then he must have developed an interest towards it. And then you talk about it in the classroom. Maybe you bring in, you put a nature table. So it becomes a more meaningful context. Then the child will be able to learn and the learning will be much richer and deeper. The seventh principle is teacher ways and child ways. Now, particular forms of adult interac interactions are associated with more optimal child outcomes. What this means is that, you know, if a teacher knows how to interact with a child, then, you know, she will be able to bring better outcomes from the child. Now, there are specific ways that a teacher may interact with a child. Now, this is what we teach in our Diploma in Montessori Education. What is the language that you use with a child? How do you interact with a child? And this interaction then will bring more positive outcomes from the child. The eighth and the last principle is order in environment and mind. If you walk into a Montessori classroom, what you will observe there is, you know, there's complete order in the environment. You will see five different areas in each area. Every material has got a place. There is a place for a ma every material and every material is in its place. Even at the end of the day, once the children are done with the materials, it goes back into place. They have respect for the environment. When there's order in the environment and when you encourage children to, you know, maintain this order to respect the environment and to respect the order in the environment then the child will be able to also have a certain order with the things that he learn in his mind what is in the environment will then be formed in his mind these are the eight principles I hope you've enjoyed this session and if you have any questions just send me an email and I'll be happy to connect with you I look forward to sharing much more of Montessori with you all. Thank you.